I'm also a textile artist. I say that kind of hesitantly because it kind of sounds like a, such a big term because basically I just play around with, <laughs> with textile and paint and text on, I say on canvas um, and uh, images, maybe photo images. But the other thing I do is uh, beadwork and um, so um, seed beadwork and I've written some poems about that that I want to read to you now. My mother uh, beaded uh, when I was a kid, and I used to think, why does she want to do that tedious thing? Oh, my God. Who would ever want to do that? <laughs> Skyberry and Waterberry. Her sisters, the flowers, her brothers, the berries, emerge from her beadwork, choke cherry red, goldenrod yellow and juniper berry brown. Skyberry and waterberry swell from her fingertips, sprout runners and cleave to stems near the scent of warm Saskatoons and sour gooseberries. Petal, berry, stem and leaf, sewn down now in seed bead lines, flourish bright from her hands. Through her fingers stretch fields of strawberries their starched white petals raised heads above layers of green leaf. Through tiny seed beads, she is linked to lineage. Through the inheritance of her mother's all case, knife sheath and hide scraper, she is acquainted with moose and deer, their velvet smoke tanned hide, what they have given up, what they have shared with her, with her mother and grandmother how they have sacrificed themselves to skyberry, waterberry. Like the liquid life of berries her brothers thirsted for in ceremony, and recall now in color their small fruit tasting of blossom. Um, one of the ways to do uh, beadwork embroidery is with two needles, uh, where you would thread one needle, bring it up through the uh, hide, string a bunch of beads on it, and then you tack it down with the other needle and thread. With second sight, she pushes. Sitting close to light, falling through a window, glancing down a needle along a thread to the center of a bright bead is her belief in petal, stem, and leaf. She directs a long, thin needle picks one tiny seed bead after seed bead after seed from a saucer until it is drawn a long white string with her fingers at the end of a needle. Her fingers nudge their seeds side by side, looping their weight into a petal, laid flat against the fabric nap, each seed pressed against the cloth by the thumb and forefinger of her left hand, while the thumb and forefinger of her right plumb the unseen side of the fabric with another needle and thread. And with second sight, she pushes the needle and thread up precisely where her eye wants to meet it on the surface of the fabric. Then down between each bead by seed bead seed, over and over, this repeated, sorry, repeated, this gesture petal takes patient shape. The bead's color makes no sound, but it is cranberry, moss, and fireweed. It is also wolf willow sap and sawdust, as well as chickadee, magpie, and jackrabbit. A bead is not simply dark blue but Saskatoon blue. It is not merely black, but beaverhead black. And it is not just a seed bead. It's a number 11 pearlized bead, a number 10 two-cut glass bead, or a number eight French white heart. The fabric weightless, supple through her lissom fingers, the wax thread yielding, and the bright beads obedient as good children, lining up in straight rows inside the white outline of a petal. But as she shifts to light falling on her beadwork, 
her thoughts turn to stem, how it attaches to petal and leaf. Slim stem, bloodline to root and back to leaf. And she, the link, like stem, from rich root to sprouting leaf, her children. She, this link, holds each beadberry, a thought. Each beadberry, a word in prayer for her son, for her daughter, for her grandchild. She considers blue beads as holding a piece of the sky reflected in berries. Her same fingers gather Saskatoons draping from branches, bent blue with fruit, and releases them to the lard pail tied to her waist. They're dropping the sound of small drumming in the pail. Her same fingers scoop Saskatoons, the fruit of feasts, from a bowl in the sweat, that place of gathering self and others back to womb, that bulb of life in her mother. Each bead a birth she senses as light grows faint as thread. Each bead a birth she sees her eyesight fine as thread. Each bead a birth she listens each bead sewn down, a word in prayer. Uh, beadwork is kind of like um, uh, quilters and patchwork where you, you can't have enough material and you can't have enough beads. And uh, my mother would always say to my dad, oh, I want to stop at the bead store. And he'd say, why do you want to stop at the bead store? You have more beads than the bead store. <laughs> so this is called Beads, the Right Size and Color. If you follow the trail of yellow seeds pinched by her nimble fingers into the moist velvet earth, you will surface into the sun-swollen prairie where coneflowers spike up, buttercups and dandelions ignore you entirely. If you follow the trail of blue seeds pushed into the black nap of loam by her calloused fingertips, bold crocus will poke their furry heads in the raw air. Blue stem will feather in front of you, and slough grass will inflict paper cuts if you yank them. And if you bend to examine a buttercup, your eye will follow the rim of its inner eye, convex and pollen swollen. Then you will finally understand why she searched, while she searched countless beads for the right size and color. <laughs> 